business, it's always good to lean on the wisdom of those who have traveled that journey. Those who have fallen 10 times and then pick themselves up on the 11th time. Perhaps if you had a mentor who's traveled that journey, the chances of you failing too many times could decline because you've had somebody that actually is there to impart their wisdom, their knowledge. But also the responsibility of the entrepreneur is to have the ability to listen to what the mentor has to say because when it's our idea, we tend to be very passionate. We have all the answers and sometimes that's where the point of departure is between you and your success. The reason why I decided to join Mara Mentor is because I'm very passionate about the youth and looking at the economic state and also how the youth are in South Africa, we need to be able to rise up as young people to create opportunities for ourselves because you literally have to go out into the streets, really learn and educate yourself about what it is that is required to be successful. Nowadays, your education is not enough. I think it's really important for incubators and accelerators to offer mentor-led programs. Because very often you get business development programs that are driven by academic-minded individuals or individuals that have an understanding of what an entrepreneur needs, but they haven't been through the journey themselves. National Mentorship Movement. Paul, what is it about? It hasn't been launched, but we're hearing about it in all corners. What's beautiful about this country is the generosity. But I think, unfortunately, materialism is creeping in. That's my personal view. And there's much more of a sense of entitlement and what's in it for me. You know, how do I get more money? How do I get the, the fancier car, the fancier house? So I think by encouraging mass-scale mentorship where people are encouraged and feel an obligation to give back, I think that starts to create more of a culture of giving again. especially amongst the elite who are the people who are going to be turning to people who have got business skills to really start mentoring. As much as we've mentioned that there's a lot of heavy weights and you know, big names that are rallying behind mentorship in South Africa. You, at whatever level you are in your life, can actually be a mentor. You don't have to get to a certain level where you feel you can actually give back. For mentors, um, the do's, definitely, um, I would definitely say that they need to be available. You know, availability in terms of entrepreneurship and business is very, very important. They need to make themselves uh, be accessible to young people as well. That's a definite do because without accessibility and open communication, then it just really defeats the whole purpose of being a mentor and really driving the initiative of mentorship. Um, another do for a mentor is um, always, always be a matter of fact in terms of what it is that the young person needs because sometimes as a mentor you may not want to be hard on the mentee because you think well they're not ready for that the the, the matter of fact is in business you get thrown with so many things at the same time and you really need to be that person that is uh, ready for what it is that the entrepreneurship and the business world is offering so mentors really need to be matter of fact in terms of what it is that the young person really needs to do um, in terms um, in order to succeed um, in, in their entrepreneurship and in their businesses in advising young people don't give away everything I think the, um, the misconception that also young people have is once you get mentored, the mentor will then give away every single secret that they have. You also need to work towards what it is that you want. They may, throw, they, they may give you advice, but then you also need to take that and transform it into something that's much bigger than yourself and the business itself. Some of the mentees' do's and don'ts are definitely be conscious of and respectful of your mentor's time. This individual has taken the time to grow with you on a journey. Know what you expect from your mentor. So have clear goals set out in advance. What is, it, what is your expectations of the mentor? And prepare for those sessions in advance. I mean, very often I would speak to a mentee in one session and the next session they have, not, they have done nothing with the advice that I've given them. So that's quite frustrating. So make sure you respect your mentor's time and prepare. It takes work on both sides. So your mentor will put in the work. Also, I think it's really important to be respectful of the context that your mentor makes for you. Because remember, one of the main roles of a mentor is to open up their networks to their mentee. And if you are not respectful of those contacts, you don't show up for meetings or you show up late, 
and as well if you exploit those relationships it's disrespectful to your mentor and will tarnish both your reputation and that of your mentors i think the most important uh, attribute is to set expectations up front i think that happens in any relationship it doesn't matter whether it's a boyfriend girlfriend relationship you know just set expectations up front otherwise i think you get taken to the cleaners um, and i think especially in this kind of relationship because often it's very easy to to get kind of to have misunderstandings and to expect the world or expect very little and you know you're kind of trying to find each other in the space you know so often mentees um, feel quite uncomfortable with asking for too much um, you know so they'll go to one meeting they won't even ask for another meeting they think like they're so lucky they had one meeting that's unbelievable you know what I mean like they see their mentor as like almost like God you know um, and and to the other extent as well sometimes mentors are frustrated by mentees because you know they're not arriving on time for meetings they're not doing the homework necessarily um, they're not really putting enough time and energy into you know the relationship you know so if, if one can spend I would almost suggest the first meeting is only about that before you even get into the business just setting sure. the expectation up front what do you you know, and with open-ended questions, you know, me saying, if let's say I'm a mentee, I'd say, what do you expect of me? And you say, what do you, well, what do you expect of me? And we'll talk about, you know, and what are the kind of things that might go wrong in this relationship? Yeah. You know, and what are the kind of things that you've learned from other relationships? And, you know, you make that crystal clear. And I'd almost put that in a document, you know, that frames the relationship going forward. So I think for me, that's absolutely numero uno.